What would a perfect smartphone look like? How would you want it to work? Well, I have some ideas and I'm gonna share them with you right after the cool intro. Hey there friends on YouTube, my name's Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is painfully honest tech, tech so honest it hurts. If this is your first time here, like and subscribe and do all the things so you can come back and see me again for more super fun, awesome video type stuff related to technology. Commercial over. Let's talk about the concept that I have here. I'm gonna take ideas from phones of the present and phones of the past, and I'm going to rework them into what I believe might be the next step in smartphone design. Maybe the next evolution in smartphone design. And I even know who I think could possibly do it, but that's for discussion later. What I wanna do right now is go through step by step the ideas that I have and the features that I wanna see in the smartphone. And then we'll talk about uh, some super fancy, like futuristic ideas that I have that I got from watching science fiction TV shows. First, let's talk about the screen. Now I'm gonna be taking stuff that actually exists right now on phones in, in the present day. And to me, the screen that I think gives the most bang for the buck while not having the problems of OLED and stuff like that is probably the screen on the Razer phone, which is a 5.7 inch IGZO LCD screen. It's 120 Hertz, which means it refreshes at twice the rate of all the rest of our smartphones. And it, it shows a wide color gamut. What do I wanna see in sound reproduction? Well, of course, if you've watched my videos, you know that I want a headphone jack. And that's pretty, pretty significant for me. Uh, you could take the LG V30 headphone jack, DAC amp combo, quad, DAC, bloody blah, blah. You could do that, you could take that and just throw it into this dream phone and that would be fine. I also wanna see something like decently sized dual stereo speakers in the front, similar to what the Razer phone has or if you're, if you're old enough to remember HTC when they had their boom sound on their HTC One series, that was some really good sound as well. Design. This is up for debate. One thing I know I don't wanna see is glass. I don't wanna see glass all over the place. I don't want, you know, a, an objet de art in phone. I just, wanna, I just wanna have a nice, ruggedly built phone that looks nice that, where the design holds together. I'm thinking of phones like the uh, Lumia 1020, which was a gigantic phone and it had all kind of fun colors and a polycarbonate plastic. Yeah, I'd like to see some sort of polycarbonate or perhaps like, I don't know if you remember, I'm going even way farther back with Microsoft devices, but the Zune had some really interesting color combinations. Now they had their typical black and their typical white, but then they also had this like brown, green, double shot kind of color where it was brown, but it had a uh, iridescence that you could see through and it had this green tint. I mean, I've always admired Microsoft's balls for creating something that looked like a bar of uh, green shit, but they did. And I bought one and I thought the Zune was a great device and it died. If Microsoft could only bring some of that Xbox magic over to their other, or Surface for that matter, over to their other devices. Microsoft would be doing a lot better in the product world than they are. For storage, I'm gonna go with what I think is the sweet spot, the perfect place uh, for onboard storage in a smartphone, and that's 128 gigabytes. It's enough to take video and photos and not really feel the pinch of too little space. I think you could argue that 256 is maybe too much unless you're a super power user of your phone for video, videos, videos, <laughs> photos and videos. And if you're a power user for photo and videos, um, you'd probably have what I also would require on this device, a device that had uh, some kind of expandable storage via micro SD card. So that's what I want, 128 gigs, micro SD card, RAM. Most phones these days come with four, not, not eight, four 
gigabytes of RAM. And that seems to be all right. I mean, Apple has less, but Apple has, it has its own chipset and ecosystem and bloody blah, 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 da, 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 da. So they don't follow the same rules as everybody. But I'd like to see something like the six that's available on the OnePlus 5T or the eight that comes with the Razer phone. I mean, the Note 8 has six gigabytes as well. So I'd like to see six to eight gigabytes of RAM. Is that so much to ask for? For the camera, since the iPhone 6S, I really think that the video and photo capabilities of all phones almost have been good enough to use in everyday situations. Taking pictures, taking video, even in more critical situations like doing video for YouTube or something like that. I think that phone technology has moved forward with the camera and right now probably the best example according to from what i've seen and according to a lot of other people is the pixel 2 camera the pixel 2 xl i'd love to see a camera that worked in that way that had that technology or something similar to it that matched the quality of the pixel 2 xl battery as i said before i don't care if the phone is slightly thicker uh, thin phone doesn't matter as much to me as phone that will last all day. That's why I carry a plus model iPhone instead of a smaller one because the smaller one, the 4.7 inch, doesn't ever, ever get through the day. I like to have that battery security so as to fend off battery anxiety. So I want to see a larger battery in this perfect dream phone. And by that I'm thinking you know, the Razer phone has 4,000 milliamp hours. I'd like to see anywhere from 4,000 to 5,000 milliamp hour batteries in this dream phone of mine. Doesn't seem too impossible, does it? Chipset. Now this is hard because on one hand, I really think that having the power of the Apple A11 Bionic <laughs> chip is, is in incredibly valuable for where I want this phone to go. However, uh, I know that that bionic chip, although we may be able to rebuild it, <laughs> is not available for phones and devices outside of the Apple ecosystem. But I want that power. I want that 10,000 something multi-core score on Geekbench so that this phone can get a lot of stuff done. You'll find out more as I go on. As for charging, I'd like to see USB-C. I'd like to see USB-C with Thunderbolt 3 capabilities so that this phone could drive an external monitor and have Bluetooth so it could control something like uh, a keyboard and mouse and work somewhat like the Samsung DeX. What I'm thinking is this perfect next evolution of, of the phone could be as powerful as we need it to be to take care of a lot of our desktop usage or laptop usage as well as the phone use that we need on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't know if anybody remembers the Motorola Atrix, which had a screen and a keyboard and you plug the phone in and it it was really cool. I bought one. Unfortunately, it was like super expensive and it didn't work all that well. Smartphone manufacturers other than Samsung have really kind of stopped developing that kind of stuff. Here's another idea. What if you want a game on this desktop setup. What about an eGPU that is a separate box that could sit on your desk and be a hub for all the stuff that you would need to plug into a computer but can't plug into a phone and would also, through this USB-C Thunderbolt 3 port, be able to power a larger graphics processor so that you could, in fact, maybe play some games or do some higher computational stuff with your phone. What I'm looking for, if you haven't already noticed, is maybe a movement toward the phone becoming the one device that you need that can do everything as a phone and can also take care of a lot of your day-to-day -day tasks when it comes to computing. So I'd like to see that Thunderbolt USB-C port. For security, Synaptics has been working on and has developed at this point uh, the under screen fingerprint reader that everybody was having so much trouble with. It actually works now, I've seen a demo. I'll try and like put it in a box up here somewhere so that you guys can see it as well. Very, very cool. It really does seem to work pretty well. How scalable it is, how much it, you know, how much it could be implemented on a large scale is yet to be seen. But 
it does exist. So I'd like to see that on this device. I would also like to see something like Face ID. While I like to have a fingerprint sensor, I love the convenience of Face ID for doing things like unlocking apps or unlocking payments or any of those kinds of things. I, I, I think that that was, for me, one of the best features of the iPhone X and the Face ID. That takes us to a difficult place, the operating system. Now, Apple would never build this device, so I can't necessarily say iOS. Uh, there's a lot that I like about iOS that I'd like to see in this phone, but I just don't think Apple has it in them to build it. And that gets me thinking more and more about the Windows Phone. Let's take that and just set it down right here. Windows Phone. Let me ask you this. Now, I'd like we've gone through what I'd like to see, and I don't know that I'll ever be able to see it on any one specific phone. I don't think that Apple is ever gonna get there. I don't think that Android is ever gonna get there at all. Uh, it's gonna take the wherewithal of a single company I think, that has this vision that they're willing to push toward. Now we know that Windows Phone has now been decommissioned and it's a dead technology, but what if Microsoft decided that they wanted to create a Surface Phone? It could be very similar to the Surface tablets with all of the external stuff and the ability to use mice and all that kind of stuff. Still, the idea of a Surface Phone with a lot of these features is possible microsoft has been able to start making forays into the hardware world that haven't failed the surface and the surface book are both very good devices overpriced some might say underpowered at more reasonable prices some might say but they're nice nice products and so maybe the surface phone would be the way to go microsoft is the company that has the best opportunity to take what they've done with tiles and blended it into Windows and do that again with the Surface Phone. If you just imagine basically a shrunken Surface tablet and, uh, and then, yeah, this could really work. The Surface Phone, much like a Windows Phone with all the features that I mentioned before and perhaps connection to an eGPU for more power if necessary. This could work. This could work. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not an engineer, as I said. I, I don't know how to make any of these things work, but I know that we have the technology out there in bits and pieces in different devices all over the place to somehow make this work. Now, somebody just has to do it. Maybe Microsoft is the company that has the ability to do it. Maybe it's somebody else that we've never heard about. Uh, but I think that in order to make that transition from mobile to desktop and make it seamless, it's going to have to be a company that's one of the major players in that field. And Microsoft is perhaps, especially, and then there's gaming too, which you could connect it with the Xbox. Oh my God. Oh my God. Microsoft, you got to do this. You just got to do it. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I, this, this is blowing my mind. This is unbelievable. I, I really think that this is something that could be done and I think it would change the landscape of la phone, desktop, gaming, everything. Just go, uh, it, 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 crazy. Let me know what you think down in the comments. What, what do you agree with me on? What do you disagree with me on? What features would you like to see that I didn't mention? This is a cool idea. I love doing this kind of thing. So I'm gonna have to do it more because I'm an idea man, if you haven't noticed. Anyway, thanks for being here. My name's Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.